And he oh. rocked up to training one day, like pre, oh, no, like during the year, and he had this like yellow Nike tick, like <laughs> peroxided into his hair. <laughs> and you yes, have said, like, and how do you have the confidence to do that to your hair? One, think it looks good. Two, then walk into the pub in front of Choco. Oh. I think nothing was going to happen. Coming back from the Achilles, it looks like yeah, he was running laps and Ebo was there and he's like, um, he's like, mate, take the rocks out of your boot. Like, take because it looks like he's like, it looks like, you're, it looks like you're trying to run and you've got like a rock in your footy boot. Oh. <laughs> and, and Chappie actually asked me to bring his him after he'd had a few beers. So I still remember the next day thinking, did he really mean that or not? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I went over to sound. Oh, mate, you know, we we'll bring going to Chappie's wedding. He's like, what are you talking about? I was like. Hey, you might have gone to it, he's like, no. Oh. <laughs> um, well, I reckon I've, I've put him in hospital twice. <laughs> Bobby <laughs> mentioned this. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Pairs on a Pod. This is episode 17 and probably the biggest episode so far. It's been building throughout the whole year. To this moment and we finally as the intro says we got him but before i introduce <laughs> him i'm going to introduce a man that thinks he's the pokies king which in fact he just gets rotten luck his name is jack hudson hello welcome to the pod again, mate. Mate. um yeah going all right the pokes lately form's been good but yeah. uh, we've had we've had wangers we've had maddie we've had dav because you love his name being thrown in there <laughs> but we've got him we've got him all man right. I'm going to introduce him because we've been so excited for this for about, I don't know, six months. So let's do it. He played 121 games for Port Adelaide, 53 goals. He was pick six in 2002. He's known for the most stylish and best looking hairstyles we've had at Port Adelaide. I speak of the legendary, the name of Better Cool Sour, Stephen Salifex. Sal, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, boys. Did I tell you what, Wanganine and Primus you've had and you're, you're saying I'm the biggest, which is really concerning. <laughs> Two of the all-time greats. I've got Davenport and Sergeant covered, no worries. But <laughs> All right. Well, that, abs- absolutely. And yeah, Dav's going to spew about that. And we asked, <laughs> we asked Serge this at the end of the show because now I need, I need a second source as well. Now, Dav has always claimed he doesn't know where the Eagle Killer nickname came from. Sal, can you also verify that he did it himself? Confirmed. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. And in fact, I reckon I, I reckon I saw him down at Carlton like a couple of years ago, and I reckon he bought it up then too. <laughs> so he's going with it. It's a thing. He's it's brought thing. it with him. Oh, hashtag, that's hashtag Eagle Killer. Oh, that is terrific. <laughs> but I love that it's confirmed already. Yeah, beautiful. Had to get that out of the way. But so honestly, <laughs> so chuffed to have you. So run us through what you've been doing since your playing days have ended, mate. You've been doing a bit of stuff with Carlton as well. But yeah, take us through it. Yeah, um, so a little bit, yeah, it's, it's 10 years this um, October, I think, mm. when I left, um, which is, yeah, which is pretty scary. But um, yeah, got back to Melbourne pretty quickly after all finished and jumped into um, industrial commercial real estate which is obviously pretty cool. So just big bulky warehouse sheds, um, they're selling and leasing those in and around the inner east of Melbourne. Um, and obviously had a bunch of kids, four of them, uh, four boys. So that's kind wow. of, yeah, two, two in Adelaide. So two South, South Australians and two Victorians. So we don't talk about the South Australian ones. We, <laughs> we focus on the Victorians, put our engines in those two. Um, and yeah, jump, jumped in to do some coaching with the um, with the Carlton AFLW girls. So that uh, that's was four. Yeah, it's my I did it for four years, but uh, this year's my first year out. So just life has become um, yeah pretty busy with the kids and their sporting um, stuff that they're doing, which I want to sort of stay involved in as much as I can because you, you can't kind of get that time back. But um, yeah, uh, and I couldn't really commit to the girls full time as much as I would like to have because um, it was obviously really good fun and good learning and they were awesome. So I know obviously clearly it's it's taking off and it's going to get bigger and better. Um, and Port's actually this year, which would be cool, which would be good to watch. So mm. but that's, yeah, that's kind of really been about it. We've, um, there's obviously been a bit of stuff more than that, but yeah, that's the bulk of um, what's <laughs> happened. Yeah. Yeah, in a snapshot. Uh, I did see on your Instagram actually, I think it was yesterday, uh, one of the kids playing footy and then up for an award, I'm pretty sure. So thought about him for that, mate. Not about him. 
<laughs> I was just going to say, is someone is one of them following in the footsteps? Um, it's funny. I just dropped him off. He just finished training, and he he um, I dropped him off to my brother-in-law's house because he's babysitting tonight. And uh, anyway, my brother-in-law was renovating his bathroom, and my father-in-law was there helping, and they're sitting there having beers in the garage. And he, he's like, "You coming for dinner tonight?" I'm like, "No, nah, mate. I've got I've got to do this podcast." Um, for some Port Adelaide tragics just to have a chat to these guys. <laughs> and they start, he started laughing. He's like, you know they're going to ask you about Louis straight away. I'm like, mate, it's not about Louis tonight. It's about me. <laughs> <laughs> Piss him off. And first, second question, I'm talking about my son already. So, um, no, he's he go, he's okay. Yeah, he's, uh, he's certainly got much more speed than I ever dreamt of, um, which I don't know where he got that from. He's a left footer. Um, but yeah, he yeah he's he's got the league best and fairest tomorrow. Oh, sorry, on Wednesday rather. But um, yeah, so we'll see see how he goes as a thirteen year old. So he yeah he loves it. He's he's that. Um, I often talk about like you hear those draft, you know. Oh yeah, my son loves his footy and he carries the ball around everywhere. Blah blah blah. Mate, he literally sleeps with four or five footies a night. Bloody hell! Literally every night. And he like go we go shopping to get something at the grocery shop. He'll walk around and kick the footy in the shops. <laughs> <laughs> Please, like everywhere I look, there's a footy somewhere in this house. So, um, yeah, he's pretty, he's mad for it. And a port supporter. Diehard Good. Port supporter. Oh. Hey, that's why I bring him up. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, he's just strolling down the aisles at Coles, just kicking drop punts, <laughs> just oh. knocking some soup over. But it's a real thing. It's, oh, it's just staggering. Um, so no, he's uh, yeah he's you know kids have those like teddy bears that they kind of like they're, they're comfort things mm. yeah he's his footy like it just he's with him everywhere like let the thing go so mum's always yelling stop kicking the footy in the bloody house <laughs> <laughs> it's a few, a few dents in the wall oh, uh, absolutely. You, you mentioned draft Sal um, run us through your draft as well so it went very early um, yeah what was the like of the process um, yeah it was a bit of a um, Connor was interesting. Like, I, I didn't speak to Choco at all. Um, I didn't have any idea really about what I put on that too much, to be, to be frank. Um, but, yeah, the draft camp was, uh, you kind of knew in the pecking order, you know, you kind of know where you sit in the scheme of things just based on the vibe you get when you're there. Um, and talking and bumping into a few coaches, I kind of got, got whiffed of the fact that I'm going to go reasonably early in the piece. Um, and I remember walking past Paul Ruse and he had pick five at Sydney. Because what happened, uh, Carlton lost their two picks. Mm. So I was touted to go pick three to St Kilda. And then Carlton, because of their salary cap issues, they jumped. So I got a phone call rather from St Kilda the night before the draft saying, we're going to take you early in the night. And then during that night, um, later on, is actually when they lost their picks. So then all of a sudden, mm. they've gone obviously with Goddard because Carlton lost their two picks. Um, and then I kind of had no idea. But throughout the draft camp, I... Yeah, spoke to Paul Ruse. I only spoke to kind of like, I think it was like North Melbourne. Uh, Sydney said no, but it's because they said, because I just, um, mum had just died kind of 12 months beforehand. So they said, we're not going to take you. You need to be staying in Melbourne with your family. I remember Paul Ruse in passing saying that. Um, and then who else was there? St Kilda, I spoke to, but they said, we'll take you. But obviously got up, was pick one. So they sacked me. Um, the Bulldogs were always taking it at all. They would, so they took Tim Walsh. They needed a forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and then pick three was Brisbane and they took um, Jared Brennan. So then obviously I slipped to six and um, which is cool. I, I kind of looking back, I needed it. Like I needed to, I needed to move. I, I needed to get out of, of Melbourne um, as, as harsh it is to say. Um, but obviously I grew up pretty quickly with um, obviously mum. So I had kind of, I knew kind of what I had to do when I was there, but um, there is a certain weight of expectations as um has come to an early pick and we had a kind of a big party and mate, I literally it was like a sad day and by the following Saturday I was gone. Like I was in Adelaide. <laughs> yeah. So pack up your shit. Oh, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I just kind of and I had only really done year eleven, so I hadn't even finished year twelve. Um oh, so I went to went to school with a <laughs> significantly large ego, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> the peacock the following sucks. day. Absolutely the big strap walking in. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, obviously ducked off and uh, yeah, before you know it, I was like into, into try. I think I, we had a, a Saturday morning kind of running session um, straight into it on, on the Saturday morning. So there was no, uh, no, no kind of this easing into it. It was, uh, yeah, welcome and start running pretty much. Oh, that yeah. sounds like hell. Yeah, <laughs> welcome and start running. Yeah, just go. So anyways, it was good fun. 
Well, how do you find the first training session coming to Port and then like a t- totally different environment with a few big names? How do you find that? Um, I yeah, I knew, and I'm going to touch on what Toby said before. I knew that I had come in with some sort of strut and arrogance, but to my <laughs> defence, to my defence, I made a pact with myself not to be a dickhead. Like just go in there, <laughs> yeah, just go in there and train hard and shut your mouth. And when you get spoken to, reply nicely and just go under the radar. But I don't know, for whatever reason, it clearly didn't happen. And I tried, which is concerning. <laughs> um, but the session I remember was a running session. We just had Andrew Russell like, uh, as the fitness coach back then. And it was um, six, I think it was like six 1Ks or some six two-minute runs or some rubbish like that um, at Uni Loop. And, yeah, we only did, I think, because it was me, Stephen Gillum, um, Megahead and <laughs> Wade Champion. Yeah, Wade Champion. Was the, oh, the champ. Yeah, the big goose. Um, so it was a four of us. So, and seeing those two, like, I was like a bit of an overweight fatty when I got there. <laughs> Gilly was like a pencil, like skinny as a rake. And then you got Ebo, who looked like a mountain just with a big head, like a ball of muscle. <laughs> and Wade Champion was the same. I'm thinking, holy shit, these two bikes are massive. And I'm just this little fatty. Um, but the boys, yeah, like it was, it was really, really opening. But they were, um, yeah, when you see like kind of like Treaders and Matty Primus and guys that are six foot five, you know, flying down time trials, and yeah, it was, it was uh, really impressive to see um, those boys. Like I, we did it. My first, my first ever time trial was a two point two. It was Kane finished for I think it was Kane, Wil- Wilbur, Michael Wilson, maybe Stewie Cochran somewhere there. I was either fourth or fifth, I can't remember. Um, and I remember coming in the back straight and someone screaming at me. And I looked back, it was, it was Matty behind me. I'm thinking, shit, he's like six foot six and he's like flying, like just back <laughs> like, I'm like, holy moly. Like it was just a, just impressive athletes to see them at full tilt and the drive and the determination just to get better each training session um, was obviously what has, um, you know, they kind of been built it into us as we kind of got older. You said you try to keep the sort of the mega head style thing intact. Um, yeah, how did that go after your debut? When you, <laughs> you, you did quite well. The debut in against per- West Coast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't really. I, I can't really remember that game. Like I remember kicking two. I think mm-hmm. um, one cheap one, and then one from I think one from forty or so. Um, we got pumped by West Coast in their prime. I think we got pumped in the third. I think we we're pretty close up until half time, and they smacked us in the third. Um, and I just remember it was the first time people kind of knew who I was. And obviously, back then, there was none of this rotation rubbish. It was like, <laughs> you're only coming on when you're kind of like last, last resort, you know. So I think I might have played 15 minutes, 20 minutes of the whole game. Um, and I remember just obviously walking up and down the boundary line and just getting ripped by <laughs> just six <laughs> over and over and over again. The first time I was like, yeah, welcome to the big league, Stephen. So, um, and we, yeah, so we, we, we got pumped. But yeah, I think I played seven games that year, which was good to, good to kind of get involved. You yeah. had your first win against the Hawks as well, two weeks later. How'd you find, how were the celebrations as well for that, uh, your first win for the club, but also your first win in the AFL career? Yeah, it was, I, don't, I literally can't remember. It was that long ago, but I did not run, I think it was with Chris Hall, maybe, when I played his first game from. Oh, I think so. Maybe, yeah. Obscure. Mm. Yeah, Humphrey. Um, <laughs> I think I played my first game with Toby, um, mm. Thurston's, and then, yeah, Hawley, obviously, against Hawthorne. But I, mate, I, yeah, I probably would have only played 20 minutes again for the whole game as it is back then. But, um, yeah, the, the team was obviously super successful back in sort of that 03, 04 um, era where they were, were winning kind of 20-odd games a year. Just couldn't replicate that into the finals, unfortunately, until 04, clearly. Mm. That, that was that uh, certain night, Ant, that um, Gav decided to take a leak on the field because no one could see what was going on anyway. Oh, yes. The old <laughs> leak at full forward. <laughs> you heard yeah. about that, Sal? Which game was that? Against Hawthorne. No. Pissing down with rain. <laughs> and apparently Gav's just decided to do the old leak it in the forward pocket because he was busting. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, was like he, everyone everyone clearly always asks like what was Gavin like, what was Gavin like? And all, my memory of Gavin is the bloke had done everything, like everything. And often before games, players find a way to um, 
you know, get up for games and, you know, get all hyped and whatever, running into walls and kicking footies and doing all this rubbish. And I just remember Gavin just sitting out in the corner with his boots off and no socks, reading the bloody paper, like reading the paper and like reading the record, <laughs> just where to run out. And he'd run out, he'd kick four, have 20, and like just be a freak. I'm like, mate, how do you do this? Like just that relaxed and calm with himself, knew what he had to do and just was the last guy getting dressed but would go out and just destroy games. And when the tie was his St Kilda in that final was the key. Like just had to do what he had to do to get it done and, yeah, you sort of see in awe and, um, you know, someone that I certainly tell my kids that I play with that guy. Yeah. Play with that That's guy, cool. yeah. Now, we'll move into the start of the next year. Now, your hair. <laughs> what? So, what, what was going on? Yeah, no. This, well, I've always had a thing for hair, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I got drafted with purple hair. What? Oh, shit. Yeah, it was oh, purple. Yeah. Dig that up, man. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was kind of like, it was kind of darkish, but when the sun hit it, it was genuinely purple. Um, Mum was a hairdresser. My auntie's head, like I literally got four or five addresses that were in the family. Um, and the t- I don't know what happened with this, the, the swoosh, but like it went from just kind of going to Yellow Strawberry at West Lakes was where I got it done. Yeah. Um, and I said, oh, maybe let's just run some tips through this thing. But you couldn't tell because it was only really, so Toby talks crap because <laughs> he's, he's taller than me. He, like it kind of went from here and then it went like obviously back all the way around. Anyway, there was reports that I got paid by Nike to do it, which was a <laughs> I wish I did. Um, and I know, I know Yellow Strawberry the following day, because we played Essendon, and we pumped them by like 100. Mm-hmm. And the days where we went back to Albany after the games to sell raffle tickets and that sort of rubbish, mm-hmm. mate, literally every person I spoke to was talking about my hair. I'm like, <laughs> I can't do this shit. Like, I can't, like, <laughs> it's detracting from the players. You know, I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to know about my hair. The following day, the hairdresser literally he said he had 15 people call up to get it done. Oh, <laughs> oh my yeah, God. Yeah, no, it's no word of a lie. No word of a lie. Yeah, he's like, we it just went wild, like this hair. But you could only see it when it was the bird's eye view mm. um, that it kind of looked like that. But Choco always, like, I know Toby said, like, you know, coming into the group and this, but Choco was like, mate, you do what you want to do. Like, oh, yeah, he was really good about that stuff with me, particularly because mum had passed and she was a hairdresser and he kind of knew. He was like, mate, if that's obviously within reason, like not to be a dickhead about it, but, um, yeah, if you wanted to kind of get colour and stuff, like he was he was all for it. So um, just to show that individuality, I think. Yeah. So <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, mate, it took off. It was staggering. So it, it was... I didn't want it. I might bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, please let us be the first people that know if you do bring it back. Yeah. So honestly, <laughs> I might, uh, I might try to get back for a showdown and like club it us when we come to first kicks or first go. I might bring it back, especially for that game. Maybe you know, like do I get oh. over there next year? Oh yes, imagine yes. first goal of the game. First goal of the game. <laughs> <laughs> the first goal of the game and Sal's back with his hair. With the hair, yeah, just for that game, special occasion. So I'll make the offer now. If you do come over to Adelaide, join Ant and I in a goal kicking comp, and we'll join you with the hair stripes. With the hair, cool, done, easy. I'll do happily it. do it. I'll do the purple. That's what I'll do. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, man, there's a couple of a uh, couple of those draft photos floating around. There definitely was purple tinge in it. Mm. Anyway, but anyway, so the, the back to that story. Like I literally had it. I uh, had it done. We played Sunday, Monday morning. I was back at the hairdresser to get it changed. Like, oh, that's <laughs> it. yeah, <laughs> done. <laughs> Oh, I remember. I think it was what post game. Chad Gorns just said it was a bit shit. I think. Oh yeah, JB asked him. Yeah, yeah. I remember Kingers. Kingers did my hundred game tape, and Kingers was like, "Yeah, he had his fair share of shit hair and shit cars." <laughs> uh, thanks, Kingers, for your hundred games. <laughs> Good on you, mate. <laughs> that's that is terrific. Yeah. Oh, that's I love that so much. Hey, that is, if you think about it, draft year two thousand and two. It's twenty years since the the purple hair. It is. Mm. Anniversary. Bring it back. I should have done it for tonight. Oh. oh. Dead set. We wouldn't have been able to start the pot. We would have, <laughs> <laughs> we would have been in all sorts. Oh, oh. That's, that's very good. Actually, move. we'll move forward into the next story then because 2004, obviously, uh, grand final year would have been hard to break in, but obviously you started the year really well. How did you find it as a whole premiership year, being a part of that elite group? What was that like for you? Yeah, it was it was pretty amazing. Like there was something really staunch about the group that year. Like there was something building; you could feel it um, throughout the whole 
season. I think you only really, like, when you look back at the names in that group, like, it was pretty phenomenal, like, the, the team that was able to field week in, week out. Um, it was just a hard, yeah, it was just in such a tough group to, to get in. They needed to obviously continue to blood younger guys um, to keep playing. And, and Ebo, I think, might have won the Bagheri that year too. Like, so the mm. depth in that list was significant. Um and I think like Kashui Crocken came in, and so did, uh, Byron Pickett was there as well. Like they come in as top like top ups. That ended up playing, um, you know. So I think I ended up playing like eleven or twelve games that year. Again, in that kind of like thirty minutes, twenty minutes kind of pinch hits, um, which is sometimes hard to get going. But um, had glandular fever the back end of the year, which kind of cooked me um, up until the sort of SNFL finals. But I was still able to train with the with the group at Albert and on grand final week. Um, and obviously he came down for the game and experienced the whole, um, not the parade, but at least there to, to see the boys and whatnot, which, um, yeah, something clearly that I won't forget, the, the emotion after the game. Um, you know, there's obviously an element of, do you know, wish I was playing, clearly. Um, mm. But you have to kind of sit back and, and, and take a step back and realise what the achievement actually was. And just the build-up of, you know, I, I, look, I looked at Matty kind of as inspiration because he had obviously did his knee midway through that year you know, who had done everything for the club and, and um, bled for it. And for him not to be there, I kind of, that was my perspective on it. Like, mate, you're 19, like, seriously, get over it. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> you'll get it again. Um, have a look at this bloke who's, you know, done basically what, you know, was obviously the captain and, and done most things um, for the club. And, you know, he's had to, um, you know, watch for the sidelines when he should have clearly would be there if he was fully fit. So, um, and then from then on, it, yeah, obviously led to some more success until, um, yeah. We won't say. <laughs> and 05, obviously, missed a bit. And then 06, you really made your mark. Um, yeah, what was it like actually really getting that consistent run of games? In? Yeah, the, the obviously, the injuries were clearly an issue. Um, and it was funny, I never really had any injuries as a, as a junior. Like, I was, yeah, it, it kind of didn't miss many games at all, if any. Only really my first shoulder was um, in Dan, a Danny Nong Stingray. As, like, as a 15-year-old, I remember playing on Nick Del Santo. He was a he played for he played for, but I was playing half back against him and just let out for a mark and landed and kind of popped out and went back in was the first instance. Um, and then obviously from then on it was yeah the glandular fever stuff, the knees obviously in the AFL. Um, but finally yeah just just finally got a run on it like with a bit of luck, maybe a bit of maturity with the body. Like I I look back at photos and realise how kind of not an AFL body I did have. Like you do need to have a hardened body and that come obviously with time. Um, I was always fit and always could run reasonably well, but just didn't have the infrastructure in my body to kind of get through a season. But yeah, that's, I think that might have been maybe when I went to half back too, like in freed up wing half back, kind of that sort of quarterback role that Peter Bergon was doing a little bit of. And um, yeah, teams work out pretty quickly <laughs> what you're there to do. <laughs> so that didn't last that long. I did the last a few years, but um it was just good. It was just good to, to feel a part of it, good to feel wanted, good to feel like you. in order for the team to be successful, you need to play well. And that's kind of what I enjoyed about it, that there was, um, you know, there was some pressure on me to perform um, in order for us to be, you know, somewhat successful during that period. Yeah, 100%, I think, uh, as well. I think uh, Just quickly as well, the shoulder, shoulder injuries, was that because, you know, just trying to carry the big, the big pressure of being such a star as yourself? Not a joke. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Serious statement. <laughs> Serious statement. Like, I've had shoulder injuries and it's bad. Like, popping your shoulder and, and doing all that. Like, seriously, the rehab and stuff for doing shoulders is actually quite um, you know, tormenting. So, how'd you find that coming through all the shoulder injuries? Um, well, I had four of them, Rico's, um, on, the, on the right one. Um, so my first one was the end of my first year, my full one. Um, and I remember doing that at the MCG against Adrian Cox, it was. The ball guy from... That's a throwback. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Real oh, fast. Sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> On the far wing, and I remember it. It was like deep, like round 17 or whatever it was. And I remember just reaching for him and I was going one way, he was going the other way. And it just kind of got me and ripped me. I remember it coming out like, and I could see it kind of down here. I was like, yeah, okay, I'm in trouble. So I remember going into the chain rooms at the G and Mark Fisher, Dr. Mark, who's still there to this day, Dr. Mark Fisher, um, I ended up lying on the bench, so on the kind of the massage table, 
And I remember him just going, now this might hurt a little bit. I'm like, okay, here we go. And just lifting my shoulder up towards my head. So kind of like that. And just kept going, going, going. And I just rolled back in. I was like, oh, that's better. <laughs> that's the first one. Yeah. Oh. And I was like, oh, okay. And then, yeah, just kind of, I think I was okay there for a period, like 04, 05, 06, maybe okay. And then 07, I was all right. I played the granny that year. That's one of the Achilles. And then 08, it happened. And then 09, I had it reconstructed and it happened again early against Richmond in that real wet shit game. Like it was just a game where. Was that the Treaders game and he kicked the winner? No, no. We, I think we might have lost that game. That was Dimmer's first win when they were Norton 10. Maybe. Oh, no, don't talk about that. Maybe. Was that yeah, I remember – mate, we went out that game and had to come back in and change our boots and socks. That's how wet the ground was. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah, and um, I remember getting pushed over the Behringer line and just landing and popped out again. And I'm like, mate, seriously, I've just had one Rico and I'm going in again to get another one. But I just had to play through the whole year because – I'm like, well, wow, stiff shit. Like, you know, I'm not going to miss another full season for it. Um, so I kind of was in and out, in and out, um, in a sense of coming in and out, coming back out. But, yeah, then we played the dogs up in Darwin. And um, I remember running back again, getting dragged down the bloody goal square where I left, left me to hang right there with Brad Johnson of all people. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. <laughs> a lot of defenders by trying to run playing on Brad Johnson the goal square. I remember running back into the goal square and trying to spoil the ball and just hit his arm and it popped out. And I'm like, oh. and it wasn't like anything kind of like hard. And I'm like, right, yeah. this is shit. Like this keeps coming out. That was like round 16 or 17. And then went and had it done again and had the ladder, uh, no, had the, the screw. I don't know if you've, the screw where they kind of, they take the screw, they put a big screw in and they, put it in your shoulder and pin it through into your chest. Yeah. Um, which worked okay until my screw cracked. So I had oh. like, it broke. Yeah. One of the great stories. Oh. Yeah, 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 go on, <laughs> I'll please. Tell you, I'll tell you this story. This is a ripper. So <laughs> I, got it, I got it done in Sydney because uh, the guy in Melbourne who was the guru was, um, I might have had an illness, illness or something like that. So we basically said, who would you get if you had to, if your shoulder was like mine, who would you get to fix it? And he said, recommended this guy in Sydney. We're going to Sydney. So anyway, we fly to Sydney, get this, get it done. The surgery was fine. Yep, no worries. I saw the x-rays, mate. The screw was like that big. It was massive. Jesus. Eight weeks later, we had to go back for a checkup. So I fly back to Sydney and I go by myself, go for an x-ray, hanging out, x-ray in the x-ray room that, the lady's like, oh, what did you have done? I said, I've just had my shoulder, Rico, I've got a screw in it, blah, blah, blah. She's like, yep, yeah, lie down. Anyway, so I'd get this, take the photos. And then she's like, yep, yeah, just over there. She comes over to me and she's like, what did you say you had done? And I'm like, I'm straight away going, what is going on here? She's like, oh, okay, yep, yeah, no worries. We'll send, we'll send these reports back to your doctor. <laughs> I'm like, righto. <laughs> we go back to go back to the club and they go, mate, they put up your put up the things and they're like, mate, your screw snapped Jesus. in your shoulder. So I had half the screw in my chest and then half like just in my shoulder hanging there. Like Oh what I'm the like, hell? So, yeah. I'm like, so do, like what happens? Like, do I do we take it out? Do we leave it? And they're like, well, it's probably had enough time to fuse already. So we'll just leave it. Oh. So to this day, I've got half a screw in my chest and half in my shoulder still. Jesus. Yeah, like a crack bag of screws, literally what you find in the garden. Like one of those big bastards that, you know, you screw wood together and stuff. Like it was massive and it's cracked, somehow snapped in my shoulder. Yeah, it's bizarre. Oh, anyway. I'm stunned. Oh, no, it's yeah. a true story. It's, yeah, it was when she That's... said to me, when she goes, what did you say you had done? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> 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 Unleash the bad news. <laughs> yeah, oh, perfect. Just what I wanted. So, um, yeah, that was oh, wait, whatever that was. I can't remember, to be honest. But, yeah, touch wood, it never came out. Like, from then on, um, it hasn't hasn't come out at all. It gets really, really sore, uh, particularly cold mornings. But, yeah, with footy-wise, like, it was fine, which is good. See. Hado, I told you, the best only do shoulder injuries, mate. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Righto, righto. Now, uh, now, right. None of this coming off the ground, having weeks off and stuff, mate. Just get back out and play. No, I broke my collarbone <laughs> 10 weeks ago. And I stayed on the ground for the rest of the game. It was completely fine. It's courageous, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> he, he's going to pay relief. Like Any pain relief or nothing? Oh, a couple of panadols. I think that was it. Yeah. 
probably a couple of tinnies to be fair. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, Peronis. But, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 07, so like good year up until one day. But um, run us through what that year was like. Like really good young crew. Like yeah. you missed a bit of it, but you came back for some of the closest games that we had. Yeah. Yeah, no, started off and then broke my ankle. Which was random, just running on the wing with no one around me. Um, right in front of the oh. bench. I don't know how. Anyway, just another great story. Uh, <laughs> just literally, like I look like I got shot. It was so funny, <laughs> so funny to see. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, that that happened. Um, but the, the whole year was just yeah, like it was. I can't don't know how to explain it. Like I think we'll patch you early, um, and then just got on this run just with the core group of like obviously you know Chad and Treaders and Peter and Sean and um, Daryl. Like those guys were just kind of overseeing everything, um, and then obviously the, the younger guys were bringing the energy really, um, and that. That obviously led us into kind of winning ten or eleven in a row, um, and that North, that North Melbourne game was awesome. Like that was one of the great games to be involved in. Just obviously knew that we had it wrapped up at half time, um, but just the emotion of it and the expectation, um, the crowd was unbelievable. Like it was one of those goosebump goosebump moments. Um, Traders doing his bow was awesome. Like it was <laughs> so funny. <laughs> we should have thought about it, um, but then obviously, the, and, and then. Yeah, we just we were just playing. We just kids. We were just playing. Like we we're just having a great time. We were su- such, particularly like the you know sort of uh, me and Ebo and um, Serge and Chappie and like that, that kind of like Piercy, like D D Rod, like that sort of crew. Like we we're just having such a great time off the field too. Westy had just started. He was kind of doing his thing. It was Bokey's maybe first year, so he was kind of like cruising around doing his thing too. Like it was just yeah, just so much fun. Um, and then obviously that the, the lead up into the grand final was yeah yeah I, I, I hold that dearly because it's not you know you don't yes we got pumped but you don't get to do that every day of the week um, and I, I was a St Kilda supporter as a kid and I loved Robert Harvey with a passion and did when I played against him still um, and that bloke's played around and x amount of games and done everything in footy and never got there mm. um, so I take it for what it is that I was a lucky one that got to experience that full week. Um, and the game itself, obviously, the build-up, the pre-game stuff, the parade, you know, as a 22-year-old, 23-year-old, um, probably, you know, you certainly do think that up, oh, it will happen again and again and again, but clearly it didn't. Um, it, it's, uh, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't think everyone uses that as an excuse. I don't think it, it's certainly, you don't think about it when you're running a pre-season drill. You don't go, oh, shit, we lost that by that much. Like, it d- didn't really affect us. But from afar, the media have to write something about the poor start to the year, so they, like, use that as an excuse. But... Yeah, never really got brought up um, after that. It was just they were just phenomenal. They would have smacked any team they played. Mm. Uh, I, I'm firm on that. Like they were exceptional um, that day. We'll, we'll go to a couple of weeks back as well, and we'll, we has get did get mentioned in Better Call Sal. Um, Jacob Surgeon, I think, teed you up with a kick, <laughs> and you ended up getting absolutely floored from it. Um, <laughs> how many times did that happen? Firstly, and um, how like we loved your attack on the ball. Like just how. Why were you so crazy? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Search had a habit of giving me shit handballs, like regularly. <laughs> like regularly. Like that one against oh, – I, I, oh, I think Bo Waters got me that day, and I reckon I had met Bo out a few times just like a few years before. We got drafted the same year, and we we just – we kind of hit it off. Like we, weren't, like we weren't mates as in with text and catch up and stuff, but we just had a respect for each other just because – you know, he was a good guy and we kind of we got, got on really well. I reckon he could have put me into, like, the next year if he wanted to. I reckon he pulled up that, that hit. Oh, I really Jesus. do. Yeah, I really do. Like, I, he didn't hit me that. I've watched a few times. It's on YouTube and the kids always bring it up because they're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and work. Like, I think it's funny. Um, <laughs> but he certainly could have, like, dipped me real hard. Like, yeah, could have cleaned me right up, but he didn't. Um yeah, so just a shit handball by Serge. Like, why would you give a forward handball in a pack like that? You didn't even look. <laughs> like, <laughs> handball behind, man. create some space. Like, no, let's just give it to him. He's running forward. Like, typical, typical Serge, panic with the footy. Oh, get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor Serge. Like, this is funny because Maddie said he's a, he was a shit kick. And then you <laughs> say he can't handball. <laughs> yeah, just panic with the footy. Oh, uh, no. 
That's, oh, yeah, no. sorry, mate, that was that one, which was, yeah, pretty grim. But, the, yeah, the Hawthorne one was the, that was the one that, like, knocked me right out. That was that was going with the fight of the ball and just getting cleaned right up by Josh Smith, where I was, yeah, mm. on another planet for a few days. But, um, yeah, bleeding from nose, eyes, yeah, everything, which is pretty... I can't remember it clearly. Yeah. But, um, back in those days, concussion rules didn't really, they weren't in place and you kind of just, you know, go back on and you play in the last quarter and you can't remember anything else, but couldn't remember my wife, which was interesting. Oh. <laughs> Righty, eh? Yeah, How did that, come, out, that conversation she, go? Yeah, no, 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 not well, not well. But um, he came down to the change rooms and she, I had no idea she put that all. Holy wow. shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's when you know you've got hit. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, really? my, nose. my nose is still broken. I'm flat about it. So, yeah, anyways, um, that was two big ones. Yeah, Alapada Carlo thought you were dead that day. Yeah, he did what? say that. The Hawthorne one? Yeah, yeah, the Hawthorne one. Yeah, I, I thought I died too. Yeah. yeah Nathan Loney <laughs> kicked it. Nathan Loney, well, I thought I was open. I remember just starting the game really well. Like, I had like eight or nine touches in the first 15 minutes. I'm like, come on here. I'm going to have yeah. a big. And we're up, we're winning. Like, we're dominating. And I remember just cruising down the wing, like through the middle of the ground, just trucking the play. And I remember seeing Lawrence, like on the far on left left footer, like on the far wing, mm. had it. I'm like, oh, I'm on. Like I looked around, I'm like, no one was with me. I'm gone. So I ran inside 50, doing like these ones, like, you know, like that. Oh. All of a sudden, I like turned at the last minute and Joel Smith's ass just hit me right dead smack in the face. And that's when I'm coming back. <laughs> gone. And I remember Gilly, Gilly, Stephen Gillen, who like he's one of my really, really good mates and still is. We lived together when we got drafted. Um, he was there, like he thought I died. Like, so he was playing for Hawthorne at the time, and he was like standing over, making sure that I had not died. But um, oh, yeah. it was it was a good one. It was a good one. And the other one against Bayer, like, uh, yeah, it was just a that wasn't that that was looked bad. Probably looked worse than what it was. But I remember Chappie running past me, screaming, "Get up!" Right, <laughs> 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 <Well, yeah>, mate. <laughs> Bit hard. <laughs> yeah, with a few swear words as well. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, <mate. laughs> Oh, imagine, imagine that you just die on the footy field from being an ass to the head. That's oh, yeah. So uh, yeah, after that, mate, I um, yeah, you, you kind of you certainly think about it. Like when you go back, someone I don't know who told me. Like someone told me, like there's players that just put themselves in those positions because they just do, and yeah. there's other players that just avoid it their whole career, so they never get scrutinised for it because they just don't do it. So there, there obviously clearly are and were a couple of times. The following week, in fact, where I kind of just did the tiniest little like, oh, this is going to happen again. Oh. And, it gets, and it gets scrutinised because you look like you're shirking the contest. But, mm. you know, the week before, you get cleaned up. And then the week before that, you're flying back into packs and, you know, you've got Jonathan Brown running into you and Barry Hall trying to smash you. Like, <laughs> you know, you're just kind of like you're doing – so, you, you know, you put yourself out there to do it. And I did, and certainly sometimes I, I did it, but other times I kind of was like – and there are times where you wait for it and it doesn't happen. And you're kind of like, oh, shit, now I look like a dickhead because you're kind of like, oh. <laughs> so, lose, lose. That, that, that was me all of my junior footy just yeah. waiting to get poleaxed. <laughs> and you were the Ruckman too, Hutto. Oh, no, that was, well, Twig Ruckman, yeah. It was <laughs> real good. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. Uh, actually, just quickly as well, 2007, Geelong, down in Geelong. You had a good day, two goals, 21 touches. Uh, the last goal from Dom. We talk about Tom Logan cramping as he celebrated with Dom. What was yeah. your view of that goal? I think I was in the middle somewhere. Yeah, I think I was somewhere in the middle because I, I traditionally was a bit more of a half-back kind of wing, you know, kind of float quarterback kind of setup. So I wasn't really a noted kind of – unless I could sniff one, I'd get forward. But apart from that, I'd be helping out the backs. Um, I think I was kind of in the, in, the, in the middle of the ground. But he had a – Big day, Dom. Like, um, and he always, always hates me to say, but he always was okay on, on his left foot. Like, he had a <laughs> had an okay left. Um, so yeah, it was no surprise he kicked it. But yeah, what a day! Like, what a you know, kind of to, to catapult us uh, to get to where we got to, and to you know, to beat them down there, which is still hard to do now. Um, it was it was a big day, and the, the bus ride back to the airport was was fun, and probably the first time we believed that you know what, like we can probably go pretty deep here, like. Mm. Um, I did think I think they still had a couple of players out, like Lee might have played and someone else. Yeah, but um, Bartel. It was a Bartel, yeah, yeah. Yep. Two average players, no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was still to, to to you know to be a part of that, um, and it still gets played now. It's uh, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. I didn't realize that that much. I thought I was pretty shit that game. So twenty one's okay. Nah, <laughs> two and twenty one. I've got it on you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's Ant's homepage on these. Uh, <laughs> <It is. laughs> 
Feel free to send it across. Tab, Stephen Salopec, <laughs> AFL Perfect. tables. I'll send you the link. Perfect. That'll be good. Uh, and run us through the next few years after that, Sal, and then um, obviously towards the end of your time at Port. What, what was the whole time like? And yeah, then leaving the club. Yeah. Um, so 08 uh, was arguably probably my best year at the club. Um, yeah, I kind of found a bit of a niche there at <clears throat> halfback um, where every club started to have players to set up play and, you know, do that sort of rubbish, um, architects, whatever you want to call them. Um, so, yeah, obviously with kicking and running ability, that was um, helpful um, and the ability to intercept marks. So, uh, oh, it was, yeah, personally, was it was, was a good year, challenging year for the club. Um, coming off the back of what happened, expectation again of we'll, we'll be there again a year older um, and obviously trades and what was going on obviously in the background. Um, but, yeah, it was, was a really good year for me until I had Achilles tendonitis, which kind of cut me short um, from everything really, which was disappointing. Um, and then obviously that just led on to, um, you know, 09 again starting off the season really well. Um, until yeah, clubs obviously worked out. Well, hang on, this bloke's not going to defend. Um, <laughs> and the boys, the boys let me know about it flat out, like Ooh. Serge, Bobby, and all that, like flat stick. Um, <laughs> and I was there for one role, and and you know the, the hard part is, and, and I, I I I mention it to particularly to young kids now, and um, watching AFL games is that when when you are there for that reason, sometimes you forget your purpose and what you were there to do and you feel that okay well I'm, I'm the quarterback so just give me the ball like I don't need to, I'm not going to go win that half footy like no way like you go win it I'll be at the back give me a handball and I'll just do my thing with the ball so you kind of lose that instinct to win your own footy to a degree mm. um, and I, I feel like I caught up in that late in that year where you know well we want him with the ball in, in your hand that was the, the, the directive um, so you, you certainly still run just as hard and cover off but you're not really there for there for that role so um Achilles tendonitis cooked me um and then obviously from then on a kind of uh new coach prompt money took over 2010 um I was probably a day away from leaving in 2010 um to come to Essendon oh um yeah literally like literally I remember going out for I verbally okay I verbally okay at the club and then I remember going out for dinner at the Grange Hotel with traders and lady and all the partners and mega head and all that um, as a kind of, kind of a celebration or just a catch up, whatever, where we're just to catch up. And um, I got a phone call from my manager. And I remember, he, remember his words to me where exactly he goes, I would never forgive myself if I didn't place this call. I know what you've done, but James is going to be appointed as Essendon coach and he wants you to play. Right. I was like, yeah, interesting. So, but obviously I was, um, you know, my, my, my word is my word and I go into the club and, um, Stayed on. Uh, and then, yeah, obviously from then on, it was <laughs> an interesting kind of few years. And, and clearly 2012 was the most frustrating year of my life um, just because I yeah, didn't play and all that bullshit with Glaug and the Magpies and that reserve crap and stuff. And, um, yeah, it's still it, – it's probably the one part of my career that I – and not and, and the, the hard part is not actually playing one, one game in that year. Mm-hmm. And even the last game, even though – I just wanted to be there and just play and see the supporters and run run around because I never was going to stay. Like I knew what was going to happen. Mm. But I just wanted to kind of go and – I just wanted to be told the truth for starters. And I wanted to yeah. – you know, I was 27. Um, and I wanted to just see the supporters. But I just had no chance to do that. And it was just negative. And we'd won four games or five games for the year and I still couldn't get a game. So I just wasn't in a great headspace. Um, with all of it. So, but, you know, at the time, he was everything. And, um, you know, at the time when I left, I really kind of, yeah, wasn't just, I was okay with myself, but just disliked the club with a passion. Mm. Yeah. Like, I was like, how can you do this? You know, how can you do this? Like, you know, I didn't need the red carpet rolled out, but I just would have liked to be told where things were going and the direction of the footy club and what was going on with me and to tell the truth, really. It's all I can really expect from anyone. And just to say, you know, goodbye and thank you to supporters and support staff in particular, like the Dad's Army guys. Like, I love those blokes. Like, they were kind of what I was there for. I used to hang out with those guys all the time. Um, and just to, So that, that kind of, you know, cut me deep for yeah, a number of years um, until I eventually moved on. Yeah. 
And how 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 did that sort of happen for you? Where you just went, you know what? I've got to sort of like you do let go of that because yeah. that'd be a lot of pain to hold on to. Yeah, it was hard because I was only twenty seven, so that was so. Ebo was still playing. Uh, PC just got traded to Fremantle. Chappie was still playing. I'm thinking, mate, I'm with the, like I was playing with these guys. Like, am I that bad? Like, you kind of start questioning, like, am I, am I any good? Like, what's with the deal? And I, I trained with Richmond for a week when I come back to Melbourne. Um, and the Choco, Damien Hardwick, um, Chappie had gone there actually as well. Uh, Blair Hartley was there, was a recruiter. So I kind of thought mm. that would be my in. And they were going to offer me a senior rookie listed spot which I'm like, I don't really give a shit. Just give me a spot and I'll train my ring off in pre-season and I'll demand a spot on the list. Like, that's fine. Um, but they ended up going with Ricky Pettard just because I didn't play I didn't play a game that if the previous year. Um, so, which again, I had this taste in my mouth because of, well, if I had played a few games, I might have still been on a list somewhere. So mm. you could see my frustration with the club. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I met with Melbourne, uh, with Mark Neal and Neil Craig. And I remember Neil Craig grilling me because um, obviously he was an ex coach coach, just about attitude. Um, how can you play? How can Stephen Salabek be playing reserves for bloody Glenelg? What is it? You know, you're bad at you. I heard it was your attitude. You didn't want to be there. I'm like, I love Glenelg. Like, Glenelg was awesome. Like, I had a great time there. Some real good friends. I enjoy going back there to play. Um, you know, we used to tag you in showdowns and you're playing twos in the bloody SNFL. Like, I had a real crack. And then I was like, Jesus. Yeah. This is shit house. Um, mm. So anyway, didn't get picked up there clearly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was it. Yeah, we, we were we were done. And then um, the, the moving, I suppose that the the moving on period was we moved house. And I remember um, my dad had kept a shit ton of stuff, like footy cars, and I kept clippings and stuff from the advertiser and whatnot, just for you know when I get old and wrinkly and no one knows who I am. Not that, not that I do now. Um, Hello. For the kids. For the kids. <laughs> We're here. We're here. <laughs> Hello. Uh, um, and, yeah, my oldest at the time, Louis, was probably only four, maybe, maybe five. And, and he um, he kind of started going through all the stuff. And he's like, oh, Dad, have a look at this. Oh, Dad, have a look at this. Like, and I'm like, all right, like enough's enough. Like time to stop being a dickhead, Stephen, and, you know, Move on and get on with it. Like, appreciate what you did. You know, you've done ten years in the AFL and played a you know, life member and blah blah blah. Um, and that was kind of the that was kind of the turning point to kind of getting back involved and obviously going to as many games as we can when the kids aren't playing and speaking to you guys. You know, this sort of stuff. <laughs> oh, that's going in the intro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that that was really it. So um, yeah, there's plenty of stuff there. And the kids obviously are diehard footy guys, so footy kids rather so. Um, yeah, I, I just appreciating. You know, certainly, I would have loved to have played two hundred and fifty and you know done all this stuff. But that was my that was my my card that was dealt, and um, mate, we we move on. Yeah, no, name on the lockers. You've got three and thirty one. I'll quickly ask before we go into random port merch. What did you prefer, three or thirty one? Three every day of the week. Yeah. Oh, I'm I, I'm enjoying Ryan Burton number three too. I yes. think he, he wears it very well. Very, yeah. very well. So if he if the he hears this, if he hears this, you're doing a good job. I'm, I'm yeah. happy with it. I'll yeah. send it to him. <laughs> please do. Yeah, please do. Matt, we, we appreciate it. And All right, before, hello. before we got round of port merch, we got Big Brother. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Anyway, <laughs> I was too many dogs. Too many parades. <laughs> well, yeah, one. <laughs> I've hit my limit. <laughs> I was actually thinking that was a perfect segue into random port match with the footy cards and stuff, Hutto, but no worries. That's all right. We'll just keep with the flow. Big we brother. Structure. Is... Yeah, no, we do. Uh, big brother, we talk about footy trips and going away when you travelled away, Stephen. So let's talk about uh, who you roomed with when you went on away trips and any kind of quirky stories you had on footy <laughs> trips and stuff. Who do you think I roomed with? <laughs> mega head yeah mega head <laughs> yeah. yeah there's always shit going on with us too we were doing <laughs> with, you know, um, what do we used to do we used to get into the rooms and we'd we'd call um, our we, <laughs> not much I can say I don't know how much I can say about this we used to be some pretty grim stuff we used to go up to um, we used to call we used to call um, our room like sl- sloth conditions <laughs> <laughs> Which would literally, we'd walk in and we'd shut all the blinds, no lights. Yes. And just 
shit everywhere, like on the floor. Like he was a pig. Like he had stuff everywhere. I kind of <laughs> corner somewhat tidy, but it used to be sloth conditions um, straight away as soon as we went in. And then we'd always have like nine o'clock muffins after dinner. So we'd always we'd always be like looking at the clock, like bang, race down, um, grab the muffin, and then, and then and then come back and come back and eat. But he was yeah, he was just a dickhead. And he still is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> He would be one. He would be like, I hate, like, geez, it'd be funny to get on here. Like, some of the stuff he's got to say is just incredible. Like, his wedding, his wedding speech, if you can get your hands on that, was arguably the best, for such a dumbass, the best, <laughs> best speech I've ever heard. It was just so funny. Oh, no. <laughs> it was so good. Was he the only one that gave you shit when you got injured? Yeah. Oh, Traders did. Yeah, traders. <laughs> traders. Oh, traders is regular, but we 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 were pretty rude to traders. <laughs> it's probably part of the reason. It's probably part of the reason I got the ass really because traders is like, man, I've had enough of this bloke. Get him off. Get him out. <laughs> Use his influence. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, tra- traders was pretty good again, but we gave it back to him just as hard with his um, situation with his shoulders. Oh, was, was uh, obviously because he had no shoulders. So we uh, <laughs> make sure we wipe that pretty regularly. <laughs> now, important question regarding the muffins. Was it like, what, what flavour muffins are we talking? Are we talking chocolate, yeah. apple, cinnamon? What are we going with? No, it was a mixture. It was a mixed bag. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I was an apple, cin- apple cinnamon guy. Nice. Uh, yeah, Brett was, I don't know what he, I don't know what really he did, but yeah, he was just everything really, but always in his jocks, like, always in his jocks. Like, <laughs> like, mate, just like, get your buddy. And he kind of, if you get up, if you go to the toilet or something, you get up and he, I'd be watching TV or on the phone or something, and he'd kind of, you know, we, I wouldn't know about it. But he'd get up and he'd pull himself a G Street and he kind of. <laughs> I'm like, mate, come on. <laughs> yeah, really? So just, it was all a very, very funny man. Very funny man, that man. Oh, um, my God. Like you got any. One. You got anyone that you can stitch up for footy trip wise though? What have, what is that what happened at any footy trips that you can you can say on here as well? Uh, footy trips. Footy trips. Probably yeah. Can we talk fake ideas? Of course. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Um, my first ever footy trip was in Hawaii. Oh. And I was nineteen. So clearly clearly not able to draw. I'll probably stitch myself up here, really, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, not not able to not able to drink there legally. Um, mm. I remember Sean got pinged the first night. I'm pretty sure oh. first or second night. Uh, that's not real, mate. Gone. <laughs> but I, remember, <laughs> I remember I got pinged the last night. I remember going to a nightclub, and I remember we had to be at a certain pub at a certain time. Otherwise, you know, penalties on this rubbish. Um, I remember getting to. The night, the first club, the first, the night club, the first night, and I was okay. Like I was in reasonably good form, pretty happy with how I was going. And then <laughs> I got my right, my proper, my fake ID out. Yeah, no worries, you're good to go. Anyways, I reckon four or five nights later, I went back to that same place, and I'm in the line, and I was in probably a bit better form, let's say. And I remember pulling out the wrong one. Oh, oh no. like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you know, real full of confidence. Like, look at me, kind of, you know. Shit hair again. <laughs> this. And he's like, mate, that is the wrong one. I'm like, oh, okay. Anyway, but he'd seen me that he'd seen me the, the pre like the few nights beforehand. And he's like, mate, I don't know what he said to me because I was obviously um, hanging with the boys. And he's like, mate, just don't say anything and have a good night and shut up and go. So he let me in. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What a bad dog. Yeah. So I was like, thank God. And then the following night I got pinged and I was done. But I was like, okay, because I had like seven or eight nights and I was like, absolutely done. Like, you know, just really struggling with life. So I was happy to have <laughs> lay, lay low that last night. But um, yeah, that was probably that was a fond memory of um what happened. But apart from that, I didn't really go and I went on a few to cans. Uh, but Hawaii was my first and probably probably the best. Yeah, yeah. Nice. probably the best. Oh, that's terrific! <laughs> Excellent, right done, sir. Well, that's um... beautiful. <laughs> Too many fronies. Anyway, <laughs> now <laughs> we can go. Hello, can mm-hmm. we go to Brandon Port merch now? Yeah, yeah, of course, mate. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You can kick it off now since you're being a smartass. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I've got two things here. Um, yes. I, once I found one thing, I was like, oh, shit, I saw the other, and I was like, oh, I have to build this out. I found this old thing. Oh, what a cracker. Yeah, 07. Yeah, 07, 08. Um, and random fact, it is signed yeah. in gold texture by Matthew oh. Loby. Oh. <laughs> Loves. Who I'm convinced actually never played in this Guernsey. No, so, didn't. got that. Um, and then I've also got... Um, and I can't believe I've got this. This shit show. <laughs> no. Magnificent. <laughs> no. Also signed by a player who definitely didn't wear this. Um, Sam Colhoun. Oh, well, nice. <laughs> number 30, so... What a piece of shit this is. But uh, the, white so- the white socks will give me those. I didn't mind the white socks. <laughs> they were white. They were white. Okay, good. Because yeah. some, someone argued they were teal, and we were just thinking it was Dom. teal can't go Dom said it was Dom, 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 Dom said- thought it was teal. Yeah. No, nah, he never wore teal socks. He wore his no. socks anyway, so he wouldn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> what were your thoughts on that Guernsey, Sal? The white one or the other one? Yeah, the white one. Yeah, I didn't this, mind the white one. This Thank you. Like, you didn't mind it, Sal. Yeah. I kind of feel I might have had input to that jersey, potentially. <laughs> yeah. I remember a Taf, Taf Rashid. <laughs> she got a couple of those younger ones together and, like, I reckon I might have – I can't, I think it was that one. I can't remember. It was definitely oh. definitely a jersey um, where I had some input into it. So I'm going to stick by that one. Oh, I God. love it. Oh, God. Let's set the tone. <laughs> Oh, I love it. All right, okay. Jesus Christ. Steven right. Salapek has made the white dolphin Guernsey huddo. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a plot twist I never saw coming. <laughs> <laughs> Top 10 movie betrayals you didn't see coming. <laughs> right. Sal, Sal, what have you got lying around? How good? Uh, I've, got, I've got the worst jumper. Oh, right, hello. Yeah, All right. one, of those, one of those heritage ones. Ooh, oh, don't hello. tell me. Yeah, yeah not. my kids have bloody flogged all my other ones. Like my oldest wears my old, like my two thousand and two and two thousand three hoodies to training and stuff. I'm like, mate, Gosh, I rate that. Yeah, I'm like, they're good those jumpers. <laughs> they um, last lasted twenty years. So. Yeah, I've got this shit. Oh, my TM! Holy yeah. shit! That's a crack up. I don't know why I've got that. That was shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this thing. This is borderline an auction. Oh, oh, holy yes, shit. The 31. How good. Oh, my God. Yeah. Still warm. Not even still dirty, too. It's a cracker. 2005. There you go. That's sick. Um, we, we, we can't let Monty see this, Ant. Otherwise, Sal's no. gonna, he's going to be straight in Sal's DMs asking to buy it. <laughs> Did he want it? Uh, look, yeah. uh, what, what, what do you want for it, Sal? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't know. Let me think about it. I'll come back to you. Done deal. Um, <laughs> I've got the replica, the one that came out in 2020 that we never yep. wore. I've got that too, and the missus chucked it in with some red shirt, so it's got a nice tie of pink to it too. <laughs> um, but I've got my good ones. Oh, I've got this. These are pretty cool. Ooh. Yeah. It's got another training top. Yeah, nice. Training top. The big That's V. Cool. That was a warm-up warm up top. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was cool. Uh, mate, that's... They're probably the shit ones. Um, I've oh, kept that, the, I've kept the decent ones. Kind of, they are kind of tucked away. Nah, in a, good. In a safe spot. <laughs> nah, that's shit. that's that's random though. That's good. Yeah, that's what yeah. we want. Oh, bananas, oh, oh. bananas in pajamas. Yeah, bananas. Is that what they call them? I'm pretty sure they called that. Bananas in pajamas. That was probably the ugliest Guernsey, I think. Mm. In yeah. a game, in general, I think because the Crows wore something just as ugly. They, yeah, they look their shit heritage games because apparently yeah. they have a heritage, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what heritage? <laughs> Bloody oath, anyway, um, and what I'll get got? into mine, and it's probably sentimental to uh, his last game, and that's Robbie Gray's 2018 post-cancer Guernsey. And I got it signed from him this week. Oh, so, oh look at that. The V oh, with wow. the oak. That's probably random for now, but it'll get framed up. And yeah, kudos to Robbie Gray. Yeah, love Absolutely. that. One of the greats. What, what was he like coming to the club first, Sal? Like, um, I remember Brennan Lay giving him the name BA. BA? <laughs> Busted ass. Because he just looked injured all the time. <laughs> like, I remember that. And I'm like, and then obviously put a footy 
in his vicinity and yeah, good luck trying to stop him. Um, he was just ultra clean, never went to ground ever. Um, hated running laps and doing time trials and stuff. But um, yeah, it, it, it's funny. Like he's a bit like Sean Bergwijn, same, same, you know, same thing. Like mm. top goals and stuff. No, nah, no way. But you get him in a game or get him around a football or a stoppage or something, and you just can't touch them. Like they're just freaks. But um, yeah, re- really kind of obviously quiet um, at the start. But yeah, obviously grew into himself. And yeah, has I, I just wish I was a part of the last ten years because I got a glimpse of it early. Mm. But it's been awesome to have a front row seat to. Um, you know, see the last 10 years of his career because, yeah, certainly he's one game like his own boot, really. So, um, yeah, yeah one, one of the last ones I've actually played with. Um, so, it's, uh, yeah, good to good to see him go out on a high and hopefully the boys get up for him, particularly against Crows too. Like, it'd be, um, it'd be great to see him, um, yeah, play well and uh, beat, those, beat those girls. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely. All right, should we do it, Hutto? Oh, yeah, go on. I'm nervous. All right. Sal, it's time for quick fire questions. They're normally not so quick, but they get scrutinized just as much as the media would scrutinize your footy playing career. So let's get straight into it. We'll start with the first question. Your favorite TV show? Uh, favorite TV show? Probably The Simpsons. Oh, we're, <laughs> off, we're off to a flyer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That goes straight into the next question that's a part of it. Your favorite Simpsons character? Oh, really? I was Homer. Classic. Oh, yeah, yeah, beautiful. Nice. Simpsons yeah. into Homer. Yeah. Your go-to oh. karaoke song? Oh, uh, probably be some, probably some dance song or something. Oh, I can't. I couldn't even tell you one. <laughs> David Guetta. David Guetta. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm happy with David Guetta. Bit of a beach. See David. Bit of, <laughs> bit of a Wake me up when it's all over. Yeah, <laughs> down the savvy back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to see it. <laughs> Your yeah. favorite flavored potato chip? Uh, would be the honey soy. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Red yeah. Rock Deli. Yes. Yeah. Your go-to Mario Kart character? Um, was the one that shot the, the toad. Shot the bloody yes. things out. Yeah. Damn yes. Him. Yeah. He was very right. good. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. The grand finale of this question, the one we've all been waiting for, the answer. <laughs> Sal, what is your favourite shapes flavour? The cheddar. Oh, no. <laughs> is that no good? Holy what shit. What cheddar. 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 Yeah, he's cheddar. Cheddar. G'day, mate. Hello, Hello. mate. Hi. What have you eaten? You're eating licorice. That's going to be where it's 8 o'clock. I'm not eating licorice. Oh, wait. Go on. <laughs> go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go Cheddar no good. Cheddar? cheddar? Oh, coke, that's ex- that, wait, well, <laughs> anything but cheddar. <laughs> really? Well, you want chicken? Chicken crimpy's mine, and then ants barbecue. Oh, that's that's just stock standard barbecue. Like yeah, uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yes, Sal. Good. Yeah. Get it. Get no, it. Cheddar, cheddar. Well, ch- ch- yeah, cheddar is a great. I was, I'm all for cheddar. Oh, because I'm a sucker for cheese, like cheese and wine, uh, and salami, like yeah, we're happy to that. Oh, uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> cheddar. <laughs> <laughs> we, oh, that's, we, that's the we, left. Built, we built it up all season for the first person to go outside the triangle of normality goes with cheddar <laughs> that is sensational uh, sorry to let you down boys no uh, that's that's actually probably more perfect than what we could expect because it's so left field oh holy shit all right interesting <laughs> yeah all right let's move on before Hutto cracks even more shits uh, obscure port players. <laughs> yep. Sal, have you got one? Uh, Tom Rishpith. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, gun runner. Like, pushed, beat Kane Corns, which is always good to see. Yeah. Yeah. Elite time trialist, elite 2K runner. Played the Sturt. Um, yeah, probably the most obscure of my time. Um, Ooh, in, a, in, a, in a good way. Yeah. In a, in a, in a good way. But played... Played a, played one game and it was in the actually the exhibition game in London it was actually oh oh yeah yeah which was a good trip too actually it wasn't a wasn't a footy trip but I tell you what it was <laughs> why who said they missed oh Nick Lower said he missed out on it didn't he he missed out on the yes. London trip and he was devastated he said the boys had a great time oh mate it was one for the ages yeah it was good <laughs> that was twenty eleven yeah no it was the same year we made the great. 
Yeah, oh, we seven. played Geelong. We played Geelong there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we yeah. went twice, didn't we? Yeah, because yeah. there's one in 2011 as well. We played the Dogs. Uh, yeah, no, nah, did we? No, nah, because I was still around. I only played one. End of end of 2012, I think. Oh, yeah, after, I think, yeah, oh end of 2012. Ken took charge. Oh, yeah. Ken sent us over. Um, Interesting. Yeah, of course, of course, Lowy wouldn't have you hated it because he would just wanted to go and punch on with all the Geelong blokes. <laughs> Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrific. It's like a bloke. <laughs> It'd be like Matt Thomas. It'd be like Matt Thomas. Mm, like, car killer. Know? Nicest guys, like lovey, give you hugs, and then cross that white line, mate. That will literally kill you. Mm. Yeah, love love scary. Yeah, good, good guys having your team. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't want, wouldn't want to run into Matt Thomas. I tell you yeah. what. No, especially such a hard player like I was. You know, it was good to you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I saw a stat before. It was like a showdown. He had thirty-three touches, not one tackle. Sal. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> was no that all eight? Oh, that was all eight. Yeah, in the wet. Was that the one where we nearly killed all their players? Was that the one? Mm. Yeah, right. There you go. There Not you one go. tackle. It's my downfall, mate, the tackling. <laughs> 100% <laughs> disposal efficiency, though. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, if yeah. you've got the ball, you don't need to tackle it, do you? Yeah, tackle it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Hardo, what's yours? Um, so, he racked off after two seasons, went home. Um, he wore... Treaders famous 16, um, Ben Jacobs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Interesting. Yeah. Touted the future, 2.0. Oh, yeah. Well, I think Benny could hit a target, unlike uh, our dear friend Johnny, but we love the Butch. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely oh, love the Butch. But, yeah, no, Benny Jacobs is mine. Who have you got, Ant? Uh, mine was actually someone that was mentioned in a story before. That was Stephen Gillum. Oh. Pencil. Played one game. Yeah. The old pencil. A pencil. What a ripper. He's not a pencil anymore, I'll tell you that much. Hey. Oh, he's built different. He's had it, yeah. He's uh, enjoyed him time off. But no, he's uh, he's, he's, a ripper. he's uh no, he's my my second eldest godfather. So we're kind of still oh, beautiful. really, really tight. So oh, um, yeah, lived together for two and a bit years and um yeah, he was a good guy. Good guy, so we hang out a fair bit still. So um Oh, yeah, he played, he played that game in Canberra, I think, too. Like, and he got a late call up for that game. Yes, that I think you're right. He yeah, he did. Yeah. He's north. Uh, maybe. Was it Can- Canberra, Tassie, or something? I shit. thought it was Tassie. We played maybe Tassie. Yeah, Hawthorne. Maybe. I think we we won. Maybe. No? Yeah. I think and he flew. I think he flew the day of the game. Yeah. Jesus, that's what we're about to make it. Yeah. <laughs> Back then was kind of like frowned upon, like, oh, how dare you fly the day of the game? But yeah, um, yeah I remember, I remember that. But um, yeah, that was it, in and out for the big fella. But um, went on to win a flag down the Hawthorne. So yeah. And Salapic finishes. All right, Sal, this is Tom. It's time for better call, Sal. Our favourite Stephen Salapic moments. We've had all the stories from <laughs> players previously. <laughs> on uh, on the pod, we've had our favourite moments, which have been mentioned. You know, the, the showdowns and the thirty three and the countless amount of stats that you've had. But this is your time to shine, mate. <laughs> and uh, if you need a bit of a refresh, we've heard stories about how Serge obviously threw under the bus with multiple handballs. We had Toby's hair story, Dom with uh, with um, Brett Ebert's uh, insults with your Achilles <laughs> and the rocks in the feet. Not we've funny. also had. Uh, probably the most important one that Hutto and I love is Chappie's wedding, mm. where you weren't a groomsman, and that's Nick Lower's story. Oh. And also Tom Logan's story, which was about how you were throwing glasses at Schulte's wedding and blame Chappie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Oh, shit. Yeah, apparently. Clearly, I can't remember that. Oh, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> so so, so we, we definitely just we want the rebuttal, Sal. <laughs> Oh, what do you want? You want everything? Yeah, oh, well, whatever you can find that will absolutely stitch these blokes up. We'll throw you under the bus. Mm-hmm. Give them your what? best version of events. Well, what, why have you got this as a segment? Uh, because, <laughs> um, well, Ant, you best describe it. Um, well, <laughs> well, ever since Hutto and I met, we've had this mutual love for you. You had you as a player and just, I don't know, it was just yeah. something that we had a mutual connection over. And when we came up with the segment, we were trying to come up with a name and better call Sal. 
So <laughs> it, it worked a treat and we've got a poster for it and everything. And when we introduced, I think the first person we had was Tim Juniper and Tim he had Juniper. nothing but beautiful things to say about you. He was a lovely character. Um, Maddie White had a couple of things to say as well. Obviously didn't That's, have too much to do. I yeah. think he said more about getting on the source with him at some post players functions. Yeah, I did. Yes. Yeah, I remember, actually, yeah, it was good fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What he's a weapon. Yeah. Dav, Dav as well, obviously, with uh, crossing paths and uh, a couple of years of playing together. We had Jeremy Clayton didn't have much. Um, Walshy as well, loved your work. He was almost a part of, um, you know, the mutual love we had. Tom Logan with the story. Uh, Dom Cassisi as well had a lot of love for you besides Brett Everett and telling you about the rocks with your Achilles. Um who else was there? Oh, Alapato Carlo Butte was as well thought about how Serge was a shit, such a shit disposal giver. Yeah. Um, and obviously well, thought you were dead. We had a week, we had we had a month sequence of the stories were all about you getting knocked out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So they're, they're all bundled up in, you know, we wanted to hear some stories about one of our favorites. And okay. also then and then Hutto's now thought, well, let's get him on. We'll have a great chat and uh, let's insult the rest of them. Okay. Yeah. So you want me to try to go one by one? Oh, get, get well, whoever you want. Whoever is in your sights. If you sights, have a main target, go for we it. We advocate for it. Um, we may point you in the direction of Dav, but that's... <laughs> yeah. oh, but the, the Chappie thing, I can't remember the wedding. I can't remember the wedding thing. And I can't remember throwing, I can't remember throwing um, uh, the glass, clearly, which I apologise for now. Um, now. 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 <laughs> the one thing on him, and I remember we had a Mad Monday somewhere in North Adelaide and I remember I just had my Achilles um, sur- like a surgery so I wasn't getting around really well and it wasn't funny that they used to bag me about my cement brew because I was trying hard to get going. <laughs> Those dickheads are laughing at me. Um, and I remember we were playing, I don't know if I should, we were playing a game, like a fun game which in- involved a few beers and it was dropping uh, um Oh, see dropping a coin or a spoon yeah. at time into a beer. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Anyways, so they, I got it and did what I had to do. And then I, so I held it and I was just like looking around, you know, doing my thing and then dropped it in chappies. Didn't do anything bad. And he just had a full one at the time. And at the stage, they were bringing around um, like party pies and sausage rolls for the boys. Literally just out of the oven. Like I'm talking 300 degrees. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> Right, and he's grabbed grabbed a pie and pegged it at me, and he <laughs> hit me in the eye, like literally. Oh, no. in the eye. And obviously, I had my surgery. I couldn't move, so I'm kind of like, I can't get to the toilet. I can't go get a cloth. Like I can't get a napkin. So I've just got this boiling pie, like the meat and sauce, like all in my eye, like burning my <laughs> stuff to the point where like it went red and blistered. Like so, I had oh, like. Yeah. Holy a full blown fire. Like I got home, Alice, my wife. She's like, "What has happened to like?" And obviously, <laughs> I wasn't speaking very well. And I'm like, I don't know. I hadn't seen it yet, but yeah, like it literally went purple and like blistered all like through my eye. Oh my so, lord! That's a hell of a well, shot, though. If I was throwing shit at his wedding. Bad luck because I had, like, <laughs> blisters and stuff like in my eye. Um, Toby, Toby, and Toby and Dom. To go back on them, when I was 20 um, and I bought a WRX, I loved like, um, yeah, I was just like an idiot. Anyway, <laughs> and those, those, those two cuties went out and bought matching WRX wagons. Silver? <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> like, come on. Like, how beautiful. Like a cute couple driving around the same car. Like, so imagine rocking up to the club. Like, and they're both driving exactly the same car. So we took took this out of them for a while because they're just like a married couple driving around the same car. Like a a two-for-one deal of tight asses, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Don would use the gift of the gab or something. Yeah, making plenty and the tight asses get the same car. Um, Who else is part of me? Tom Logan. I've only got admiration for Tom. I can't bag him. T-shirt. One of the great guys. It'll be good to catch up with him, actually. If, he, yep. if I want to get back to Adelaide. Is he still in Adelaide? Yeah. Well, oh, he's yeah. playing out in the country. I think this is his last year playing out in the country. So. Of course he is. Yeah, of course he is. Of course he's still playing. I loved it. Just, yeah. Just one of the great guys. Um, yeah. Take, um, Dav. Although Dav copies criticism, I enjoyed Dav's company. 
Mm-hmm. And it pains, it pains me to say it. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's – I'm not sure what he's doing at the minute, but I know he's at Carlton for a bit, like doing mm-hmm. some development stuff. Actually, he's coaching the girls, I think, Oakley Chargers, I think, from memory. I think so, yeah. yeah. I think he's doing something there with the girls. Um, so I was into his footy, but um, – yeah, I've, and Brett, I could go on about Brett all day, just about his dumb stuff. But um, <laughs> Treaders, obviously, we played gags on Treaders fly out, put his keys like down the bottom of the ice bars, which is a pretty funny one. <laughs> 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 that was always funny. Um, oh, put, his, no. put his keys, I think we put Brett's keys or his keys on a kickboard, you know, like in the pool, because we had the pool there at Albany. Oh, my yeah. God. And we push, put it on the on the kickboard and then push it out to the middle of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> so then you, know, you go to, you go to the room and you're like ready to go home and then where are my keys? But you gotta like the annoying part is you've got to actually get out of your clothes and get in the pool and then get back out. So I was just like oh my God. shit that you gotta get done. <laughs> um, that was funny. Brett we we tried to sell Brett's car on we parked his car <laughs> <laughs> we parked his car I wrapped his car with glad wrap for starters. Like, that was funny. Like, I just wrapped and wrapped his car with glad wrap. But then we put his car, he bought a brand new Honda, uh, Honda Civic or something out, I reckon. I don't know what he had. And we got it and we parked it in the middle of Port Road, <laughs> like near the club, and put his number on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then put like for sale. And he just bought it. So he put like, you know, 15 grand on it, something real cheap for this brand new car. Oh. And we went to we trained, went to lunch, and we went to lunch up the road at some bakery. And he had like thirty missed calls. <laughs> 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 that was one of the great ones. That was classic, just to see him go through that. So we had to change his number and stuff, which is pretty funny. Oh, uh, right. yeah, we were we were always doing yeah random random stuff. Um, that's that's incredible. That, that may yeah. be the best story I've heard in our pod. <laughs> yeah, that won't sell be Brett's car. Yeah, oh. we, we. I don't know. If we, I don't think if we did the the bubbles, like the you know the little balls. We definitely, I definitely wrapped it because he parked at the front. <laughs> we, we never like to park at the front of the club. We always park at the back. So uh, we, got, we got him because he parked there, and we just wrapped it like with full glad wrap <laughs> over, over and over and over again. <laughs> oh, that yeah, is again. terrific. Yeah, I'm sorry. That can't be topped. No. I'm sure I can't, he probably would top it. Um, he's got better stories than I have. But, um, yeah. yeah, we always had, we had good fun. We, we had to. Like, we, training was so hard and so taxing. And obviously the media, clearly not what it is right now. We didn't have any social media, thank God, back then. Mm. Um, but, yeah, we had to kind of get some enjoyment out of it. Like, we trained really, really hard. But we had a good time off the field too. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Important. I think that's just before... We finish up. So one more player story. And this is personally uh, from someone that I idolise at the moment. Um, the quote is simply, the fit get fitter. Do you remember that quote? The fit get fitter. Yes. Yeah, so well, this came from this came from Travis Boke. Yeah. <laughs> who simply said, the fit get fitter. And uh, he apparently idolised you. And also, you were very good at golf. So that was yeah. his input for this podcast. True. This is very true. I ha- I would have him regularly with golf. <laughs> yeah. He had a half swing. He never got right around. I don't know why. He still got but, it. Yeah, it's weird. It, it, he still hit it long. I know. Yeah, but yeah, the uh, fit get fitter. The fit get yeah. fitter. No, he um, no, he's a good man. He uh, yeah, he's a ripper. I'm I'm so pumped for him. That's all worked out for him. Apart from winning a premiership, but. Mm. Um, who would have thought, mate? He was such a quiet, inconspicuous guy when he first came to the club. He lived with us for like probably two or three weeks, and I reckon he said five words. Um, <laughs> I'm like, mate, any chance of talking? Like, what? Because I had Matt Thomas like before him, and Matt doesn't shut up. <laughs> I, then I had Boki, who was like so hard and so tough to get any, you know, three words out of. But uh, yeah, he's always always close to me like we have yeah you know, kind of those guys that you don't necessarily need to talk to every day or week but um, when we do kind of reconnect it's you know it's something special um, and obviously having the the loss of a parent each um, at a younger age uh, clearly bonded us together but um, yeah he yeah just worked his ring off and um, to become a leader and you know throwing a gamer and, and he's still flying like it's scary like I could only walk at 28 and he's dominating 33 <laughs> 
thirty four, whatever he is now. So um, yeah. um kudos to him. So he's yeah, he's uh yeah, certainly a better player than him, but not a better golfer. I've still got him at that. So I'll take <laughs> take credit for the golf. That's for sure. <laughs> more money in golf, mate. More money. Absolutely, in golf. money more, mate. With four kids, I can't even play, go for a run, let alone play playing golf. <laughs> So, so before um, before we let you go, Sal, the last question I've started to ask the people. So you ever you always hear who's your hardest opponent and all that. I want to ask the one eighty, who was your easiest opponent you ever <laughs> <laughs> Oh jeez. Uh when you play loose off half back, mate, you don't really play anyone. So it's hard to get to. <laughs> I played well against grass. You let you let guys like Serge play on those guys, you know, like those guys <laughs> with the damaging possessions. So you go play on him and I'll just come back here by myself. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't know. Probably some young player that probably turned out to be a gun. Um, I actually don't know how to. You need to give me time on that. You need to yeah. give me time. I don't know. Sorry. I just think though, those uh, those kids that you played on, right? They'll be like, oh, the first opponent I ever played on was Stephen Salopet. <laughs> <Yeah>, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a flop! What happened to him? <laughs> He was on pairs on a pod. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He got drafted really high. What happened to him? He only played that many games. All right. <laughs> oh, well, that the, sounds The old cliche, ah, injuries got him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No. No, I, can't, I, can't, I couldn't tell you who I was. I couldn't tell you. But um, my first ever opponent was Jeremy Hum. There's one for you. Who? Jeez. <laughs> Jeremy Hum. He was. Hum. Yeah, Hum. Number 42. Played for West Coast. Played half back. He was the first bloke I ever played. I was in, I was half forward, so he's playing on me. Mm. But like my first opponent, if you like, yeah. yeah there you me. go. Yeah. Look what happened up. to him? <laughs> After that game, I played against him, man. That game was all done, I reckon. <laughs> Kick, kicked a couple of snags on debut. Oh, yeah, like, mate, you can't really step in. Your old bloke kicked goals at you. You're out. <laughs> Uh, he sure. just he just hummed out of there. That was <laughs> <him>. oh, <laughs> no, that's a real hum dinger by you. Yeah. <laughs> no, sure. All right, wrap it up, Hutto. That's yeah, it. Yeah, honestly, Sal, thank you so much for coming on, mate. Appreciate it. We run probably well over time, but um, no, honestly, no. amazing um, to finally chat to you. And um, yeah, thank you for all the memories you provided us. We'd love to growing up. No, no worries, guys. I appreciate it. And again, good luck to, to Robbie. Um, yeah, in his, in his final game, and um, yeah, we'll be we'll be all watching, and and uh, hopefully the club get themselves in order, mate, and get back up there where they belong next year.